Welcome to this channel where we explore all things mycology and so much more. From a single nucleus to cultures we create, experimentation and innovation is never too late. Join me on this adventure. So our grain is all ready to roll, and I think I got a game plan. So we're going to use the rest of the syringe of Appalachian Enoki from Mossy Creek because we got it on a plate already, and then we got an isolation going already. So we can send it. We got Snowball. Changed my mind there. We did a test there. We also did a transfer on that test. So what I'm going to do is we're going to send this to grain. And we're going to do a regular and amended. Also, I got a haploid that is showing some new behavior that I haven't seen Look at that shot right there. I wish you could see it, but that's what I would call pseudo rhizomorphic. And I haven't played around with that much with this culture because this one here is a haploid. I, I'm going to use this for mating. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of that pseudo rhizomorphic growth and we're going to add it to our grain jars. And then we'll have a fun experiment down the road to do. Oh, look at that. We got our line main spores from this one. Even got a couple way down there. So that turned out pretty cool. So let's get organized. I wonder if I did this wrong in the first place. I wonder if I was supposed to fold it over. And then place it in. This is like a pretty good seal. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to inoculate this. I'm going to allow the grains to come down a little bit so I can get the needle into the self-healing injection port without possibly getting the seeds stuck in the end of it. You get that, that gap, you can get your needle in there and you can squirt some here, squirt some there, squirt some there, squirt some like that, and you can disperse it better. We're going to do two bags with this. We got a little room to play. We're going to shoot for three milliliters per bag. All right, so that's about much as we can mix it up. We got it over there. We'll squirt some there. I think I messed up and hit the filter. Close. I almost hit the filter. Now we got our grain. We'll just mix it up. I was trying to do my best to keep the grains away from that filter patch. It's almost like I could pinch it there. So this is our Enoki. It's still up in the air on this and this one here is the amended one all righty so let's get back into business with something we're more familiar with 
and I'll get some of this green. I'll do the same thing. Sanitize that needle. That's ready to rock and roll. While that needle's cooling down, let's take a look at that growth. If I can get a better picture. And I wish you guys could see this over here. All right, let's put her in. That's all she's got. Doesn't look like it's going, it's like it's healing back. So I'm going to put a piece of tape over it. Mix this up. I'll fold this down here so we don't get our filter. And this one here is without Dr. Mike. chips so for this one we're going to use our test plate I'm really struggling trying to get this plastic lid off one-handed so for now on, when I'm using liquid cultures for grain, I will use the plastic lid. And when I'm using agar, I can use the metal lids because they're easier to remove one-handed. Once these transfers are done, I no longer need this plate. That's why I'm not worried about covering in between them. If I was going to continue to grow it on agar, I would cover the plate in between transfers. Kind of like less exposure, less the risk. When I add agar pieces to my grain when I'm using jars, I will shake them straight up and down to get the agar pieces to move down into the grain and hopefully not attach into the side of the jar. It's just a personal preference. Oh, that's nice and buried. Sweet. Many times I've had agar stuck to the glass and it colonized fine without any issues. So there's our snowball. And these ones here are going to be our king oysters. Clean off our ships. Spray down our syringe. Prepare our needle. Now we need to shake up our culture. Uh, let's put in, uh, try it for two. I'm going to tilt it so I can get it more down towards the bottom, too. I'm going to tilt it this way. Where are we at? So we'll leave it there. I'm gonna pull this out. Sterilize it. Set it down here to cool down. I'm gonna shake this around a little bit. Make sure we get that mice off the bottom. And out of the cap. Now this is cooled down. There we go. Now we gotta find a home for a haploid. 
see. I'm really digging this growth from this culture. I've seen it on some of my other, but not this one yet. So I'm just gonna cut around the outside because I notice since this culture is so old, the mycelium's not as quite as white as it normally is. But if it contaminates, we can clean it up. So that jar's got our rhizomorphic growth in it. This jar is just going to be normal growth, but I'm trying to pick up the best of it that I can see. In about 10 seconds, I end up hitting the phone with my grain shake, taking out the camera, and I lost some footage. So we'll go to the tent. Well, it's been 11 days since... We inoculated our grains. Let's take a look. Look at our first jar. So we got King Oyster on Magical Gypsum. Looking pretty good, but we got some troubles. I kind of suspected it. So if you look, it's not very good. So this here is the non-rhizomorphic toke. So that's a, and I'm not even seeing any growth really. So get that out of here. Looks like we're in the same boat with the other one. Yep. Oh, but it did try. Believe it or not, we can remove that and clean it up. I might do that. Like if you're watching this and you would like to see how to save your culture from contaminated grains, say like you didn't have your culture backed up and you sent it to grain and it contaminated, you can remove it from the grains and clean it up instead of hoping to replace it you can clean it up so just let me know down in the comments so let's get a better look because we got the incubator over here so this is what i use for an incubator just a cardboard box and then i got a seed mat taped to the back and then my control over here with my probe going in and then all I did was poke a hole through the lid and open it up. And there's the probe. So let's take a look at our, oh boy. There's our Appalachian Enoki. Solid too. And then we got this Appalachian Enoki. Solid down here, but not up there. So I'm not sure. Maybe a, a break and shake will help. Maybe that's not sealing properly. There's our other King Oyster. Getting some really darker mycelium. So it's, it's, it's going to work. And then we got two more cultures. Look at that snowball. It's like one phenotype there, one phenotype there, one phenotype there. But it's most likely it's just growth off the agar wedges showing different expressions 
So these are pretty close to break and shake. But this one's a little behind. So I'm going to arrange my jars differently. I'm going to put the ones that are colonizing faster than, than, than the others on that side. I know something about the dynamics of this box. Here's a better look. What I did. There's a seed mat in the back. And then uh, just make sure my jars ain't back there touching on it. And then depending on how you orientate your bags and jars or how far you have them towards fresh air or towards the heat mat can really speed up a colonization or slow it down. So that's uh this is a tour of my spawning tent. So I'm gonna let these in here and that one down there Go for a couple more days and then uh, I'll bring them out here and then we'll do our break and shake. And I'll see you here then.